Good morning, dear students. Good morning, professor. Good morning. Good morning, sir. So, students, let us start the new chapter. That is understanding financial statement, taxes and cash flows. This chapter is just a understanding or overview what previously in accounting we studied. We studied income statement, balance sheet, cash flows. All we are going to be review, just recall over here. So we'll go for meaning of financial statement. And in financial statement, we'll go for income statement. Inside the income statement, we'll discuss revenues, we'll discuss expenses, we'll discuss operating activities of financial statement, and then we'll discuss about the financing activities as well. We'll go for balance sheet, in balance sheet, we'll just go for an overlook of assets, liabilities. As you know that in corporation, we are using that this is an outsider's money in the business, or we are telling that it is outstanding debt. Then we'll discuss about the capital. As you know that in corporate finance, we are not using the word capital. We are using that shareholders equity. This is going to be divided in common equities as well as preferred equity or common stock and preferred stock. You will get to know when we will go for the video. You will let a lot of things over there. We'll go for a cash flow statement. Cash flow statement will calculate how to find out the free cash flows with two prospects. Number one is a financing prospective and as well as assets prospective. At the end of this video, we are going to be explain you that is a corporate income tax rate with an example. Hopefully this example will you give you the overall a snapshot of calculating tax liabilities. So let us start. Be with me. Meaning of financial statement. Financial statements are the written record of business financial situation. There are three main financial statement as we know that income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement. When we are talking about the written record. So written record involves five accounting terms and you are very much aware with this five accounting terms that is assets, liability, capital, revenue and expense. So let us start the income statement. Income statement is also known as a profit and loss statement. In the income statement, report the results for operating business for a period of time that is one year means 12 months. As you know that different countries are using different timings. Means some is started from January to December. Some countries they are starting from April to March. It's involved written record written record of revenue and written record of expense. So in income statement, we'll go only for two accounting terms, that is a revenue and expense. For more understanding of this, we'll continue with the income statement. You must be understand the business activities related to revenue and expenses such as selling product. You know that when you are selling product, you are receiving money. So it will be known as a revenue and then second activity when you are going to be purchase or produce any product for selling purpose. So whenever you are purchasing or producing, you are spending money on it. It is also comes under the expense. The amount of money in marketing and distributing the product or services to the customers along with the administrative operating expenses. So it means whenever you are spending money either for marketing purpose or distributing purpose or you are going to be spend the money on your administrative expense. These all will become under the expense heading. The financing cost of doing business. Whenever you are taking goods against credit and you are paying some interest on it or you are taking loan either short term or long term and you are paying interest on it it is also comes under the expense. And the last, the tax owed based on the firm's taxable income. So whatever taxes you are paying, it is also covering your expense. Income statement, as you know that 
it is represent sale minus expense is equal to profit sale is representing revenue and expense is representing cost of goods sold operating expense financing cost and taxes cost of goods sold you more knows that if you are purchasing the goods whatever you are spending on the transportation as well as the purchasing cost whenever you are going for operating expenses it means once you are operating your business you are spending money on marketing distribution and administrative cost financing as i informed you that whenever you are going to be take any loan and paying interest against it it is a financing cost taxes paid to the government as per the corporate law these are all covering your expenses as we discussed in a previous slide. now income statement you are very much aware sale minus cost of goods sold is equal to gross profit and whenever we will reducing the operating expenses from the gross profit we are getting operating income it is known as ebit e means earning b means before i means interest and t for tax so we are telling that earning before interest and tax then first we are paying interest expenses to the debt holders whatever we are getting it is known as earning before taxes then we reduce income tax and we got earning after tax then we will pay preferred stocks dividend after that whatever left it is for available for the common stock holders means owner of the organization so we say that net income available to the common stock holders as i told you that we will discuss about the operating activity and financing activity so first part when we are talking about the sale minus cost of goods sold gross profit minus operating expenses it means operating income are earning before interest and tax this portion is coming under the operating activities so this area is known as operating activity area because you are running your business or managing your business towards this now the second interest expenses minus earning before taxes minus income tax it is coming earning after tax and then paying preferred stock dividend this is coming under the financing activities so this is a financing activity so now you are aware with the operating activity as well as financing activity focus on it it will be helpful for future and we know that after reducing this all we are getting net income that is available to common stockholders now we'll go for the balance sheet balance sheet a balance sheet is a statement of financial position of a firm or a statement of assets liability and owners equity owners equity is also known as capital at a period it means we are preparing a balance sheet for a specific period or whenever we are preparing the balance sheet we are keeping three accounting term as you know that previously we will discuss two and we are having only five accounting terms revenue and expense we already used in income statement now balance three assets liability and capital means owner equity will use for preparing balance sheet we can also say that in other word a balance sheet provide a snapshot of the firm's financial position at a specific point in time presenting its assets holding liabilities and owners supplied cash that is capital means the owner give the money to the business that is known as owner equity or it is known as capital now we'll go to understand about the balance sheet more so balance sheet is divided in two part one is assets second one is the liabilities so what is coming under the assets first we'll put current assets in current assets we can say that cash marketable securities account receivables inventories and prepaid expenses fixed assets we can say machinery and equipment building and land other assets like investments and patents etc so these total assets is known as total assets so total assets is covering in one side and when we are coming for a liability side we have again current liabilities this is account payables accrued expenses short term notes also we are having long term liabilities that is long term notes mortgage or long term loans also we can say 
and this activity is known as outstanding debts. Outstanding debts means we are taking money from outsiders. The second part in the liability side, we are having equity, that is preferred stock or preferred shareholders, or common stock or common shareholders. We are calculating this on the basis of par value, means the value on which we issued the securities or stock into the market. Then paid in capital as well as retained earning. And this is known as shareholders equity. So now we are having a balance sheet, balance sheet asset side as well as liability side. So against the corporation, there are two types of liability, outstanding as well as shareholders. Next slide, the same. So balance sheet of one side is total assets. Another side is outstanding debt plus shareholders equity. Sometimes we are telling that outsiders money in the business as well as owners money in the business, in shareholders money in the business. Type of assets. Commonly used types we will discuss here. We have a different type of assets and different classification is given by the different authors and different books. But we will, we will consider about the specific what regularly we are using in our balance sheet or in statements. First is current assets. The assets which can convert into the cash within a year, such as cash, marketable securities, account receivables, inventories, prepaid expenses, etc. are known as current assets, fixed assets. These assets which are purchased for a long term use and are not likely to be converted quickly into the cash, such as land, building and equipment. Or even some definitions are telling that the assets what we purchase for long term use in the business, not with the intention to resale. These assets are also known as fixed assets. Other assets also there, it is known as any assets which are not current assets are fixed assets, such as patent, copyright, goodwill, etc. Type of financing. So we are having two type of financing in activities in any statement in any corporation that is a equity capital and debt capital. Equity capital means fund provided by the owners and shareholders. Debt capital funds provided by the creditors or we can say outsiders. Let us explain what is equity capital. Equity capital is common stockholders as well as preferred stockholders. Common stockholders. A common stockholder is a someone who has purchased at least one common share of a firm. Another word, or in other word, they are the residual owner of a business. Common shareholders have a right to vote on corporate issues and are entitled to declared common dividends. Common stockholders are paid out last in the event of bankruptcy after debt holders and preferred holders shareholders payments so we understand that common stockholders taking the responsibility of managing their business so they will get the payment at the end if something happened wrong with the company means company is going to be declared as a bankrupt then they will get the payment at the last after paying the debt holders as well as preferred shareholders Preferred shareholders, preferred shareholders is a type of owners or ownership that receive greater demand on a firm's profit and assets than common stock, while preferred stockholders do not typically have a right to vote in the company's or company's activities. They do not hold the benefit and being paid dividend before the common stockholders mostly they receive fixed dividend and have higher priority than common stockholders in the event of liquidation of firm as we discussed before that if something happened wrong with the company and company is going to be liquidate or company is going to be sell their property then preferred stockholders should be eligible to get the payment before the common stockholders now what is the debt capital there are also two type of capital is available that is known as debt capital. One is short term debt. Short term debt also called current liabilities. 
is a firm's financial obligation that are expected to be paid off within a year or in other word we can say that borrowed money that must be repaid within the next 12 months examples common type of short term debts include short term bank loans account payables wages lease payments income tax payables etc the second is long term debts long term debts is debt that mature in more than one year long term debts loans from the bank or other sources that lend money for longer than 12 months so this is a basic difference between the short term debt and long term debt short term debt is available only for a short period means less than 12 months and the long term debt is for more than one year it will be start from one and and it's depend upon the loan terms like 10 year 20 year 25 year etc free cash flows free cash flow it is also known as fcf is a measure of how much cash a business produce after accounting for a capital expenditure such as a building or equipment this cash can be used for expansion dividend or reducing debt or the other purpose in other word free cash flow is a way of looking at the business cash flows to see what cash is available for distribution among the firm's investors either debt investors or the equity investors we can know in a continuation way cash flow from assets is equal to cash flow from financing cash flow is assets means cash flow generated through the firm's assets means when you are purchasing the material and selling you are generating assets you are generating cash while you are having any business you are purchasing a product and selling into the market so whenever you are purchasing and selling you are rotating your cash in this rotation your cash is increasing or you are getting surplus cash when you are purchasing and selling so this is known as cash flow from assets in the other hand we can say that cash flow paid to are received from the firm's investors either creditors or stockholders so if you are receiving any cash from the creditors or stockholders this is known as cash flow from finance so let us explain more how to calculate the free cash flow and assets prospective so we have two a prospective assets prospect prospective and financing prospective assets prospective means after tax cash flow from operations less investment in net operating working capital less investment in fixed and other assets so when we are doing this we are calculating this is a free cash flow whatever balance is there it is known as free cash flow through the assets prospective for the more detail we can say that after tax cash flows from operation we can say that operating income plus depreciation and minus cash tax payment when we are talking about the investment in net operating working capital we are talking about changing in a current assets minus changing in non interest bearing current liabilities do you know that what is non interest bearing current liabilities it means when we are borrowing the money we are paying interest but sometime when we are borrowing assets like when you are purchasing the assets from your creditors or your suppliers that time you are paying the only money what you decided or you made the agreement between your supplier means the cost of product you are not paying any extra interest until the declared period or agreement period so this is known as non interest bearing capital liabilities and then last investment in a fixed and other assets change in a gross fixed assets and any other assets that are on the balance sheet you know that when we are purchasing the assets it is going to be depreciate year by year so it is going to be change and whenever we need we are enhancing sometimes the value of machinery you are having machinery and you are adding something on that machinery so your assets is increasing so you are investing over there so these are the prospects of calculating free cash flow 
with an assets process. Now, same we are having calculating of free cash flows of financial perspective. In financial perspective, we can say that interest payment to the credit creditors and minus we can see cash changes in a debt principles minus dividend paid to the stockholders minus changes in stocks will get the financing free cash flows. So this is the second calculation of free cash flow. Now we are going to be get corporate income tax rate. This is since 1993 we are having the tax rate and all organizations they are changing time to time by the corporate tax. But when we are going for step calculation we are still using to calculate the corporate tax in the bid. So here we are going to be identify that uh, how much taxable income is there and what tax we are paying on the taxable income. It is coming from the Pearson book. So I am not just giving this uh, information from the Pearson book. Uh, this is the first tax left. We can say that it will be start from income 0 to 50,000. You should pay 15% and from 50,001 to 75,000, you should pay 25% of the tax in your income. If your taxable income is 75,001 to 100,000, you should pay 34,000 or 34%. Sorry. If your income is 100,001 to 335,000, you should pay 39% corporate tax. And if your income is 335,001, to 10 million you should pay 34 percent tax and if your income is more than 10 million to 15 million you should pay 35 percent and 15 million to 18 million 333,333 you should pay 38 percent and the last if your income is more than or over 18 million 333,333 you should pay 35%. So this is the tax bracket that you are paying to pay. If you are having income in this way, you should pay the tax. For understanding the tax calculation, we need to know one example. So let us see. Go for example. Number one, suppose a space cow computer has sale of dollar 32 million, cost of goods sold at 60% of sale, cash operating expenses 2.4 million and 1.4 million in depreciation expenses. The firm has dollar 12 million in 9.5% bond outstanding. The firms will pay 500,000 in dividend to its common stockholders. And you are required to calculate the firm's tax liability. Remember that if you are going to be calculate the tax liability, we need to know the income statement as we showed in a previous slide. So a space cow company have a sale 32 million and cost of sale 60 percent of 32 million. So let us see we'll go for calculating 32 million multiplied by 60 percent. So you will get 19 million 200 thousand. As you know that operating expenses 2 million 400 thousand depreciation 1 million 400 thousand then the difference is EBIT. It is 9 million. Do you remember that what is EBIT? When I explained income statement, I told you that earning before interest and tax. Remember? Also, it is mentioned here NOI. What is NOI? This is net operating income because as you know that these all activities are these all activities are operating activities. This is operating activity. So this is operating activities. So that's why it is coming our net operating income. Now we are paying interest. It is a financial activity. After paying interest, we get to know that we have a taxable income 7,860,000. What is the meaning of taxable income? It means we should pay tax against 7,860,000. So for calculating the taxable income, we have to be know that the income bracket 
and tax percentage will get the tax percentage first we have to be go for income up to 50000 if you remember that from 0 to 50000 we are having 15% tax bracket once we will pay it you will get 7500 and then next tax bracket you remember that 75000 so from 50000 to 75000 then we have to be pay 25000 the difference between 50 to 75000 and the tax percentage is 25 we have to pay the tax amount is 6250 and after that if you remember that we are having next 100000 so 100000 bracket from 75000 to 100000 it is become again 25000 and now tax percentage is 34% then we will get 8500 as a taxable income after that we have you know that the tax bracket is from 100000 to 335000 so here we are having the difference between this and this is become 235000 the tax bracket is 39% it means taxable income is 91650 after that whatever balancing amount because you know that your amount is less than 10 million so it is not going beyond so after paying this amount 335,000 the balance amount is 7,525,000 would be multiplied with 34% and your taxable income in this bracket is 2,558,500 so total taxable income is 2,672,400 we can use a shortcut formula we are having total taxable income is you know that 7,860,000 you should multiply with 34% because the tax bracket is coming under the 10, less than 10 million then you will get to know that the same income that is 2,672,400 so both are having same income as I told you that again, if you are going to be a to make the total, you will get the total amount is same what we are calculating the percentage. So in this way, we can calculate that what money we are going to pay as a taxes against our income. Hope so you understand. If not, please let me know under the video main box. You have to go my comment box, give your comment. I will give you a new examples and explain you in a different way to more understanding you can understand in a better way thank you very much for watching this video i hope so you like this video understand the topics and the points what we discuss over here if you have any doubt again by the same word don't forget to write in a comment box your suggestions your suggestions is really very valuable for me i will incorporate your suggestions in my new video and if you didn't understand anything in this video, please write on my comment box. I will give you the answers, whatever your questions, your queries. Another thing is there, here you will find my personal email ID. So you can go through it. You can write your comments, you write suggestions as well as your queries. Definitely I will come back to you within a few minutes or within a few time. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friend. Thank you very much.